There are a lot of different factors at the moment that are going into the breakdown of whatever it is that is going on at Chelsea right now. Chelsea are still able to operate at a very high level because they're a high level football club, but there is a lot of things going on at the same time, consecutively, back to back, in tandem with each other, which may contribute to a breakdown of what Chelsea are trying to achieve this year. They may also contribute to a perfect storm, but the likelihood of that perfect storm continuing and that perfect storm giving you some consistency is low. Here's why. Let's first of all talk about Thomas Tuchel. At Mainz, he was seen as someone coming in and following in someone like Jurgen Klopp's footsteps. Makes him very exciting. It gives him a very similar profile to Jurgen. He is somewhat of an eccentric character coming into a club where he's doing things that tactically we haven't seen before. And frankly, that's exciting for any club. It was seen that not only at Mainz, but also at Dortmund, he was quite the innovator. But here's the problem. When you're in Germany and people start to compare you to a dictator, there are problems. And that was one of the things that summarised some of the comments when he left Mainz. That didn't seem to go against him, of course, when he first went into Dortmund, at the very top at least. But very early on, it was clear that the fans hadn't warmed to him the same way as Jurgen Klopp. Of course, Following him from Klopp is probably one of the hardest acts ever to follow in modern football. Talking about probably one of the most charismatic and at the same time kooky men ever. But again, Thomas Tuchel had this element of kooky that surrounded him. But yet the track record continued and persisted. That was that he would fall out with people. He would very often have an issue with very small things that would become very large to him. And those things would cause huge issues, not either with players, but also with people off the pitch a.k.a. Sven Mislintat, a very talented talent spotter, a guy who was seen to be quite important at Dortmund before Tuchel came in. Now, there may have been other politics going on, but Tuchel banned him from the training ground at one point. And Dortmund's business model kind of relies on them getting talent in and then treating it well to a degree where you keep them or you get good value out of them or you bring them such a point that they're worthwhile selling. That only goes well if you have a good man manager on your side. And frankly, very often the CV does not say good man manager for Thomas Tuchel. Take him to PSG where then he had to contend not only with man management, but also having to man and manage some of the biggest names globally. And frankly, whilst it was sustainable in the short term in terms of we're not achieving at the very top level, but hey, things are going in a certain direction. In the long run, it wasn't going to work and he had to go. In the long run, of course, there have been other issues at PSG, but those were not on Thomas Tuchel, and they may have also covered for some of Thomas Tuchel's problems. Thomas Tuchel then, in many ways, goes into a club which is also in a bit of a transitional phase, in a difficult time, where they need someone who's going to bring them together. And I can't help but think that actually Thomas Tuchel has kind of played on that situation at Chelsea. When he first went in, they were obviously transitioning out of Lampard, having made some signings that people would say were questioning, uh, were questionable. They've also been questioning those signings. And that is now a consistent record of, is this guy really a Chelsea guy? The Chelsea man that we need. Michy Batshuayi, Timo Werner, uh, even Kai Havertz at one point. Kai Havertz obviously came good. Later on, it would get on to Romelu Lukaku, who, you know, then fell out with the hierarchy. But Key, in a key way, also just wasn't happy with Thomas Tuchel and the man management that Thomas Tuchel had put into him. But Tuchel had capitalised before and he'd managed to, to take a squad that a lot of people hadn't really identified as a squad that would be getting to the Champions League final. Few did. Give Andy Brassel his dues for that as a journalist. Fantastically, he said, I can see Chelsea getting to a Champions League final this season. His reasoning behind that was, well... You see that there won't be consistency under Lampard with this squad. They're still trying to bed people in, but there are very talented players in there who on their day can do very good things. You can galvanise these guys to such a degree that they could play well in knockout football. And where's the best knockout football? Where the players really turn it on? The Champions League. So when Lampard left, it wasn't all that surprising that the new manager bounce most of all showed itself in the Champions League, where Thomas Tuchel is obviously revered for his tactical uh, should we say, Im implements and improvements and techniques, which is what got him a good reputation. People at Dortmund said, hey, this guy was doing revolutionary things, things visionary that we hadn't seen before. So you can imagine that always happens when he goes into a new club. Thomas Tuchel takes something with him. Hey, we're doing something a bit different here. New manager bounce, good feeling around the club, stability. He's also, by the way, made sure that 
in this small storm that we're going through, losing Frank Lampard, having an owner that isn't exactly ideal, uh, maybe we're also covering up some of the issues that he has, and then the Ukraine war comes and Thomas Tuchel kind of galvanises the players around that. We are the players who, well, we've got to fight for this club now. We've got to go out there and represent these people. Imagine that. For someone who's not a good man manager, you are given a tool, something to bounce off, something that you can go, well, don't think about me here, boys. Think about that. There's a bigger thing going on here. That's almost the ideal thing for a man manager to play on. And it also, by the way, gives you something that diverts away from some of the other issues at that point. Gives you a short-term boost, a lift, and frankly, a release of pressure. There is no pressure on Thomas Tuchel for a little while to perform. Well, any game that you lose, your club's in transition. You're owned by one of the worst people, at least in a media perspective, in the world at this point. Thomas, we feel sorry for you. You're doing really well. And you could be a sacrificial goat, a sacrificial goat, lamb, animal, for Chelsea. But you're not. You're leading this club through this time. And in fact, we respect the way that you have kept things so consistent. Of course, behind the scenes, he will also play on that. People don't like the way they play some power games. So Mislintat, Dortmund, PSG, into Chelsea. Players didn't appreciate the way they were treated. They didn't appreciate the way that he held on to grudges, personal grudges, for way too long and very often for over very small things. Players also didn't appreciate that when they weren't in favour or they weren't in the squad, they found it very difficult to work around that. And frankly, they weren't really worked with. That is what Chelsea required at that time. They required someone who could work with the pieces he was given. So then you do get onto the players though, right? Because they do bear an element of responsibility in this. But those players have put in those performances. They won the Champions League at one point, great performances, performed under a system under Thomas Tuchel that bonded them all together. And in many ways, it was the perfect storm of issues. Again, Thomas Tuchel capitalises in the middle of a storm. Because the people who are not great man managers but come in with a good system can capitalise in the middle of a storm. You're not looking to be revolutionary at that point. You are just looking to have a system that people can adhere to, something they can grab onto, something they can work through, but also be brilliant in their own right with. That's fantastic. But then when things begin to calm, and there is a day-to-day -day that you don't have anything to fight against, that isn't a siege mentality, well, then we have to get on on a personal level in a different way, because we don't have anything, anything to rail against. I can no longer talk about that terrible owner, or the Ukraine war or this adversity over here, or hey, what was going on with Frank Lampard and this transfer committee was crazy, but hey, I can galvanize this team. Suddenly Todd Bowley's come in, things are changing. There is expectation from Todd Bowley and rightly so. This guy's just bought the club for a lot of money. He owns a franchise elsewhere in MLB and he's gonna be putting pressure on these players, but also on Thomas Tuchel. That pressure will be going down the club at the moment. There will be players who will be assessing their situation. Rudiger left, Christensen left, Azpilicueta didn't want to be there anymore. Other players have the similar thing. So those players do bear an element of responsibility towards the club, which some of them have shouldered and some of them haven't. Some other players will also feel responsibility and want to lean into that. The likes of Mason Mount, maybe the likes of Kai Havertz in the long term, maybe Chile, maybe also James. I think James is probably one of those players. He seems like that kind of guy. But what I mean by that is... These, again, are long-term factors which Todd Bowley will be taking into account. He's got elements of youth there that he's mixed in with elements of experience. Raheem Sterling is experienced. Koulibaly is experienced. They wanted Kunde, could have been a young, good player. They've also got Mendy in there, a great goalkeeper who could be one for the long run. But there are elements where they haven't added to the team, and there are elements where they've gone down an avenue and things haven't gone so well. So now, because they haven't made the signings they needed to sign, they haven't replaced the players they needed to replace... Thomas Tuchel, Todd Bowley, and the players find themselves in that kind of we're all in this together, right, situation. Thomas Tuchel's looking at the players publicly. He is being told, and the narrative is, things are changing at Chelsea. Money is being invested. Todd Bowley has come in and, hey, he's bought you Sterling, Koulibaly, and he's been trying for Kunde. He even took some form of conciliary advice and that was about Ronaldo. But that's what's interesting about Todd Bowley, right? Todd Bowley is another one of those... Well, he's, he's done very well in MLB, but he's also done very well in business, which is why he is where he is. But that was also through getting advice from other people. Those other people seem to be good influences on Todd. He's not gone out there and done the typical millionaire thing of, hey, let's do something crazy here and buy Ronaldo. The fans will love it. He's gone out. He's bought pretty well. But he's also not just 
taken hit, you know, the previous guy out in Thomas Tuchel and put someone else in. He has taken people out of the transfer committee and he's taken advice on that, clearly because the previous transfer committee were playing towards the Roman Abramovich gallery and not necessarily the gallery that will long-term benefit Chelsea. They were doing deals which looked a little strange. They were also doing deals that probably didn't really play into the footballing idea of the club. And frankly, Todd Bowley was smart to get rid of some of those people. Not that they weren't good people, but they maybe just weren't the best for Chelsea. What that means is there are other unsure elements now of who and where the transfer advice is coming from. In the short term, it will be coming from the people around Todd Bowley mixed with Thomas Tuchel, because Thomas Tuchel will be given an opportunity to perform here. And that's good. But that opportunity is also the rope that he could hang himself with, so to speak. Because if you're given the responsibility, if you're given everything that you want, you have to perform with it. And that's why out in the media, Thomas Tuchel is going, nope, don't have all those pieces that I asked for. I'm still trying to achieve new things with the same parts that I had before. Because publicly, that is going to buy him a little more time. That is a message to Todd Bowley and the Chelsea fans of, I need time here. But frankly, that's a public thing. Privately, the players are going to be unhappy about that. The players are going to be hearing these pieces aren't sufficient. I don't see them as sufficient to carry out my, I don't want to say um, high-end tactics, but at least my vision. And by the way, his vision is high-end tactics. But against Arsenal, it was very clear that whilst Chelsea were putting in effort, Arsenal were galvanised around one source. Arteta being part of that, the idea of Arsenal building back up in the long run, a final, you know, like something to build towards Arsenal being good again. He's got players who've got buy-in. Chelsea do not have that right now. Chelsea are bringing in new parts. Someone like Raheem Sterling, who is great and a really good player, but maybe hasn't been there long enough to be a leader in the way that you might need him to be, or maybe isn't actually a Chelsea man, if that makes sense. And he maybe isn't the kind of guy you can lean on in the short term to lead a club through. Sure, he will set an example and he's a great player, but... You need, you know, your Terry's, your Lampards, those kind of players. Even your Drogba's, even your Petr Cech's, although on the transfer committee. But the point is, now he does have these parts, but not enough parts. And they will be looking at Werner, Mich Mishi Batshuayi, other players that people say aren't good enough, which is very valid sometimes. But also, those are the pieces you have to work with. And they'll also be looking at the likes of Lukaku, who wanted out. But by the way, Lukaku did not want to play at the club under Thomas Tuchel. Hence, why this is a one-year loan with no obligation to buy. And alongside that, that means that if Thomas Tuchel goes, there's a brand new manager comes back in and, hey, you have a player who's just been reinvigorated from Syria in a season. We spent 100 million on a couple of years ago. He can come in. You can do good with him. How about that? Not only that, but we'll give you more investment on top of that. And not only that, but by that point, we'll have our feet under the table. What I'm saying is all these different factors, the unpredictability of where Tuchel is going, and frankly, the track record of where Tuchel has been, the fact there will be unhappy players, unsettled players, and clearly there have been to such a degree they've gone to other clubs, but also that there will be movement on Todd Bowley's side and him politicking, moving things around, slowly working out what was true and what wasn't true during the Roman Abramovich era, and that breakdown of the self-image of Chelsea Football Club, but also just the image of what it was that we thought Chelsea were and how they were operating, where the money was coming from, all these kind of things. He's going to have to break that down and rebuild that up to be Todd Bowley's idea, and rightly so. You don't want to be living in a Roman Abramovich shadow for the rest of your ownership, and no, by no means should you do that. But these are three unsure elements which are huge at a club. The, the hierarchy, the manager, and the players. Very often, those are, I'd say, three of the most important things in the football club alongside the fans. And when you start to lose the fans, that's where some of these elements begin to look expendable. Because when things start to go wrong very quickly, you start to look at the things you can change the quickest. Thomas Tuchel is one of those things you can change the quickest. You can buy a few more people in January. You could offload someone else in January. You're not getting rid of that owner though. This guy's just bought the club for a lot of money. So all these things and all these other elements are going to have to move around that owner. That's why Thomas Tuchel saying I don't quite have those parts is an interesting political play. But that's also why losing 4-0 to Arsenal is also an interesting political play. Or at least a political example of what's really going on at the club. 
what I'm obviously saying is Chelsea have a lot of quality out on the field that Thomas Tuchel was able to bind together and win a Champions League with. He bought himself time with that. He bought himself kudos. He bought himself fan love, which Todd Bowley is not stupid to break. He also knows, though, that there is a short window in which he can capitalise on that, not only with the players, but also with the fans, but also in the Premier League, while people are still scared of his side. If the, uh, people aren't scared of your team, they don't play you in the same way. There was always respect from other top managers towards him. But you will notice there are a few times where there was no respect towards Chelsea last season. That didn't come from the top clubs always. That came from the lower down the league clubs. Because people just go, hey, let's just go with these guys. And it broke down. Liverpool played them with respect. Chelsea played City and there was respect. They played Spurs and there was respect. The top end managers go tactically, this guy's dangerous. And those games are much closer for a different reason. What I'm saying is, within that, it means now that Thomas Tuchel has a short window to capitalise on that. It's a very risky play on his part, but it's also buying him more time and saying what he said. But the real problem for him is there are other people who are improving such a degree this season that he is going to be judged by a different metric this year. A metric of Arsenal doing well, Liverpool and City at least remaining Liverpool and City, Manchester United improving and making ground upon Chelsea, the likes of Newcastle also looking exciting, West Ham buying a six foot four and a half guy, you know, many different elements which are coming together which will put pressure on Tuchel in the short and long term. And what it will lead to is fans saying, I'm not quite sure I'm confident in this. And that's fine. But in the long run, you know that Bowley will capitalise on that. And I'm not saying that in a cynical way. I just mean he has to. It could come together in the short term. But I'm saying it makes it very difficult long term for Thomas Tuchel. And in the long term, breakdown may be breakthrough for them. Breakdown of Tuchel may be breakthrough to a new manager. Todd Bowley has his feet under the table at that point. Things are a little bit more settled. At that point, Tuchel may be the sacrificial lamb. If you're a Chelsea fan, do you want that? Do you see it as an indicator that things are going to change and that you have a coach who was basically given some time but was also seen as expendable in the long term and a short-term stopgap? There's a lot of different factors there to evaluate, but I'm interested to know what Chelsea fans think. Who you think is going to do well for you this season, why you lost 4-0 to Arsenal, why you've not particularly been good in pre-season and why you don't still have a goal scorer. These things are all premium. These things all cost a premium. And if you're going to spend premium on them, you want them to be good in the long term. Todd Bowley's doing the right thing in looking at what they can get and not just going out there and buying anyone like other some billionaires would do. What I'm saying is, Bowley is long term. All these other factors are not. And so we may see the narrative play out. These short term factors are sacrificed for the long term of what we will call, from now on, the club. Because Todd Bowley owns the club. That could play out very quickly here in January when new managers, new players, new everyone else is available and we feel that we've given him enough time to prove himself. Because I guarantee you that is what the hierarchy is saying about Thomas Tuchel right now. We are giving you some tools, we're giving you time to prove yourself. After that, it's your own fault. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'll see you guys in a little while because Romelu Lukaku wanted out for a reason and it wasn't just wanting to go back to Milan. Other players have wanted out for a reason and it wasn't just because they want to progress their career. Why? Let me know in the comments below. I will see you guys later. I'll definitely do a follow-up video on Chelsea and Arsenal and Spurs and most of London. But the Chelsea one was interesting for today. See you guys in a little while. Much love. Uh, yeah, let me know what you think just because... I don't know, I'm interested. And it helps out my punditry on the show. Watch out. Bye.